Hello. The other day I popped to B&M, a bargain store here in the UK, and found what I thought was a good deal. Well, I thought it was a good deal. So I just made a fool of myself at the till and the lady charged me 22 quid for the George Foreman. And I was like, I think you're fine. That's 15 pounds. Uh, like it was a bit of a fuss. It's like, you just go check the label. So I did. And if you zoom in on that price tag, you'll see that's for a compact air fryer that's 15 quid. A 15 quid air fryer, that's a bargain. Uh, so yeah, George Foreman's actually 22 quid. So we'll see if this is any good. So what do you think then, Tom? George Foreman, you ever had one of them? I've not. 22 quid's pretty impressive though. Yeah, I think legally, I don't know if I could have challenged it and gone, well, you've, you've priced it wrong, but the, I just didn't read the font. Well, it was on the wrong shelf. I'm more intrigued by a 15 pound air fryer, to be honest. Yeah, it's actually, yes. Future video? I feel like if I use this thing, packaged it, it might actually go back on the shelf than the condition I bought it in. Look at that. Generally, it's been rat attacked. I think most of you other than me know what a George Foreman does. I think it's effectively a slanted uh, panini press, but uh, Tom spotted earlier, it says meet George Foreman on the box, um, which is quite disappointing because you'd be like, oh wow, George, <laughs> are you in the box? Sadly not. A random fact for you, some of you guys probably know this, Hulk Hogan had the opportunity to be on the George Foreman grill, but he turned it down and instead went for the Hulk Hogan meatball maker or something like that. Now, if I can ever get hold of one of those, if any of you have got one, that would be insane. Otherwise, we're flying to Florida and we're gonna find Hulk Hogan on his beach, Tom, all right? I'm in. Where we go now? Perfect fit drip tray slides and clips into place. Oh, that's the whole thing about it, how it catches the fat. That's one of our first tests. Ready to cook indicator light, either the red and green thing. I think that's standard on literally everything. Like everything, even, even you. Floating hinge for grilling thicker foods. That could come in handy with something. And there's an adjustable rear foot for flat or angled cooking, which is actually genius and something I was gonna try and bodge for one of the other tests at the end. That's, that's actually insane. Other thing to tell you, George Foreman, right? He did not get paid any money up front to endorse this. His wife, he got sent it years ago and he was like, oh, I'll just chuck it in a cupboard. And his wife one day like said, oh, I made a burger on it, it was amazing. He's like, do you know what, I'll, I'll endorse it. 40% of any of the profit of every single machine was his. And so he did quite well out of it. Sorry, Hulk Hogan. What better way to open the box than to read out the meat George Foreman text, but I don't wanna do it. Tom's got a great voice, he doesn't want to do it. We are going to get a proper movie trailer voice guy. George Foreman is your mealtime friend who can inspire a world of recipes, no matter what the occasion. Whether you're cooking outside of your comfort zone or simply short on time, George Foreman helps you eat well more often. Your only limitation is your imagination. I think this is definitely a return. The instructions are not inside, uh, which George, I think from my knowledge of electrical appliances, we should be just fine. The only thing to show you initially is that there's this hinge thing here. Can you see how the hinge sort of lifts? It can go up and that is that thing to do thicker food. One other thing, you'll notice that it's laying flat right now like we just found out on the instructions. If we just pull this feet back there, it then goes at an angle like that, which is traditional George Foreman thing. It was all about this tray which we'll need for our first test, cooking chicken breast. Light on, red light, wait for green light. So what I'm gonna do is give it a courtesy spray oil, and I'm gonna shove on chicken breast, and hopefully that is where this hinge will help there. I've got it hinged at the back to slant forward and catch at any drips. There's a, quite a bit of fat catching in there, and this is just chicken. I've also noticed that it's sort of slid forward a little bit. Ooh, look at that. I just need to push it up a bit, I think. I was just wondering yeah. what percentage of the UK population actually has one of these shoved in the back of a cupboard somewhere. That's quite... Because so, at 22 quid, yeah. I reckon it's probably quite a tempting thing to buy. Yeah, I reckon. Because they were like proper the, all the rage. If you have one... <laughs> yeah, let's know. Yeah, no. We'll do the poll. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Ah, okay, that's hot. That is hot. What about underneath? Oh, not so much charring, actually. Maybe I could flip it, but I'm more worried about it being cooked through. So uh, we'll just slice straight into it, shall we? So hot, but oh my gosh, bingo. That's whiter than Tipex. It's not like proper charring. It's almost like a glazed meh. 
It's, you know what I mean? It's not that real... It looks yeah. much more pleasant than just a boiled chicken breast, though. We'll take the wins. Yeah. That's a chicken breast. Yeah, that's, that's all right. But look at this tray. Look at what that's caught there. Test number two, bacon. Bit of fat on this. Let's see what this does. This is smoky bacon and I can smell it already. It's so thin, I wonder if the plates are even going to contact it. Hello. It's dripping already. Is it? It's so hard to see. Is that, about, is that still catching it there? Uh, no, oh no! Not. Oh, let's see. Actually, Tom, you can see that before me. What do you think? Looks good. Oh wow! I mean, if we really wanted to push it, we could probably go for some more blistering on the other side. Oh wow! The chicken, like the bottom of it, wasn't so good, but this is looking great. Look at all that fat there. That's really, really nice. It feels, like, it does feel leaner. That's good bacon. Mm. Test number three. Frying an egg, and I'm not even yoking here, this is genuine, you can do it on here. Now, in the olden days, in the 90s, I, mean, I wasn't even alive then, you could use a George Foreman uh, and prop it up to make it flat. So obviously we've got the feet now, however, what you would do is go like that, stick the legs on, and I think, does that look about flat to you, Tom? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> if I line it up, how does that look? Looks pretty flat to me. Yeah. However, we don't need to do that, right? Because they've added this. This didn't used to be the case. Clip those legs down, and that is now flat. Genius. Don't think we even need... I mean, no, we don't even need this, will we, Tom? No. You might want to put it in case a yolk spills over, or... Yes. In case anything spills over, I guess. Any excuse to use it. Thought we'd agreed we weren't doing egg puns. Well, I fried not to, but sometimes they happen when you're not expecting it. Look at that. And you can see it tried. It, the egg white was like, I can make it. And then it was like. <sighs> Imagine if we make these popular again. Air fryers have been around quite a while. Not as long as the George Foreman. Let's bring it back. Come on. That is coming off like a dream. Is that, is that, is that brown? It's brown. Looks a bit crispy. Ha. OK. Let me just explain what we're going to do here. Same again. Exactly the same motion. And I think that's at the point now where we can push this down. Let's see what happens. Explosion. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. It sealed it. Bye, uh, yeah. What if we get, yes, look, the egg has, uh, stop doing puns. It's egg escaped. I opened it just to see what if we get griddle lines on the top. In fact, let's help that. Oh, it didn't like that. Maybe it was too excessive. I'm just going with it now. Oh. Sorry guys, I would let you share this, uh, but this is just an exclusive. That's nice. It's really healthy, isn't it? That's, that is genuinely healthy. Like, that's, uh, you can get griddle, you just griddled an egg, really, didn't we? But like, like, tastes like a fried egg. Oh my gosh. Look at that. The yolk almost looks cake batter-esque, where it's escaped there. Ugh, stop doing puns. Oh, look at this. Can you see that, Tom? Is that yeah, good? It's crisp on the bottom. I normally give these away, but I kind of like this. Buy your own. But look at that. That is proper charred as well. That flavour. Come on. Like seriously, this video is turning into a hashtag bring back George. Test number four. Emergency panini sandwich thing using all the leftovers we just made in a bread roll. Come on, Hinge, help me. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the good stuff. Wow, I love that it's created the grooves. Oh, look how hot that is. That's like McDonald's apple pie territory. It looks discreet. You know it's warm, but it's not until you bite into it. Wow. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. That works brilliantly. Mm. It's like a panini, loads of flavor. Nice bit of bacon, meaty tomato sauce is great. Yeah. Nice and crispy on the outside. Like you said, those little bits of ketchup that have burnt. That's yeah, quite nice they've kind of given it a sweetness. Yeah. I mean, maybe I would have buttered the buns maybe just to give it a little bit more color, but it's blistered it enough and like I say, turned it into like a, a panini. Now the final one uh, is going to be a little bit interesting. Apparently you can cook a frozen pizza on one of these things, although this was possibly the original ones. We'll come on to that in a minute. Oven cook in 22 minutes. Microwave in three minutes. Hmm. This is a bit of an interesting one. Apparently uh, on some crazy forum that you could turn the grill upside down, open it, let it preheat, then place a personal sized pizza, the frozen one, on the griddle. Then you put a fork by the hinges and close the top griddle. The fork will hold the grill open just enough so the cheese doesn't stick. And you cook the pizza for around about 12 minutes from frozen to get a crisp crust and melted cheese. Now I can't work the theory out of that. We were just talking about this off camera. Like 
there's heat coming from both sides. So why do you need to, to flip that? Because what I feel like I want to do is just prop up those hinges and hope that this is thin enough. And then we're definitely going to get heat on both sides. But is this hotter than that? Of course, the other way to try is to just do it. I've got this um, drumstick wooden spoon. I've only got one, annoyingly. Get that under there like that. Definitely a lot lower that side. So if I prop it up that side too, maybe with my diamond spatula that Zed forgot to take the other day. It's starting to get lethal now, but I have got these sweet corn things. <laughs> it's going to be so barbaric. It's something from like Mad Max. That looks quite good, right? Ah, still too low. That's where that needs to go up. I'm going to go back to the old drumstick technique here. And I'm going to do what was suggested on that form and put it in the hinge. However, I'm not going to flip it. Stick that down and let us pray. Oh my gosh, it is not touching. It is so close on that back bit. Heat from the bottom to cook it through. Heat from the top to melt the cheese and cook the pepperoni. Goodness me. This is exciting. All right, despite the mild waft of pepperoni, uh, it's just, it's doing it. It's just doing it very, very, very slowly. So in true George Foreman style, if you're going to George Foreman a pizza, and actually I can see little puddles of pepperoni there, Let's proper George Foreman it. I was really hoping for a sizzle then. That has only been literally a minute and there is some serious smoke coming. So let's see. Oh my gosh. What the heck happened to you? I'm so glad I checked that. Looky, looky, looky. Oh, wow. It's a crispy base pizza, okay? That is not frozen, I promise. Well, it could be, we'll find out in a minute. And before we taste this, this t-shirt's slightly on brand. Uh, remember, I'm doing the pizza giveaway for Patreon at the moment. Uh, my Patreon was shut, if you uh, didn't hear that on the last video. So no one could sign up to potentially win the pizza oven that I wanted to give away if you signed up. So we're extending it till the end of February. Good luck, and do check out that video if you haven't seen it. Right, let's burn our mouths. That's good. That's worked really well, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Took probably about half an hour, though. <laughs> yeah, it took a long time. 10 times the time for cooking it in the microwave. I think, actually, Having had those pizzas in a microwave, I'd much rather have it like this. Mm. There's a lot more like charring going on, therefore more flavour. You tend to finally get a little bit soggy out of a microwave as well. Yeah, uh, so I would say that my, I was most impressed probably by the egg. I don't know why. Uh, I found that quite the way it tasted. It felt healthy. Um, that was it a pizza for you? That for me. Pizza nice. Pizza. However, we can take this up a notch. Some of you guys are probably going to say, why didn't you do Will it George Foreman? And maybe we should. Mm. I was going to do waffles. So perhaps that is a follow-up video. If you'd like to see it, suggest down below what you would George Foreman. And to close this video, let's look at some fat. Bye. So earlier out of interest, we poured the chicken fat into a shot glass and left it in the fridge for this video. This is how the chicken fat looks. A little bit fatty, a little bit watery. We did the same with the bacon fat and yeah, we made a bacon candle. See you later. I don't need to name this appliance. It literally says George Foreman on it. Although thank you to people for the continued suggestions for the air fryer. I think I want to call my air fryer Claire Fryer. And I really want to find someone called Claire Fryer legitimately. If you know someone called Claire Fryer, get in touch. I want an air fryer with Claire Fryer. That's the dream.